Divided World, Divided Class. Section. Workers' Militancy and Global Wage Differentials. As an explanation for global wage differentials, the relative intensity of class struggle internationally cannot be dismissed out of hand. Page notes that class conflict in advanced capitalist societies typically centers on the distribution of income from property, as opposed to ownership of property. This involves a well-organized and class-conscious working class confronting an economically powerful elite able to bargain and make concessions over wages. The ability of industrial capitalists to do so, however, is constrained by lagging profit rates caused by overaccumulation and overcapacity, loosening control over international trade, political instability accompanying systemic militarism, and repression and or dependence on servile or semi-proletarian labor. Where stagnation ensures wage rises cannot be afforded painlessly out of economic growth, pressures to increase investment highlight the need to raise profit margins at the expense of wages and or the need to balance trade limits employers' ability to finance money wage increases out of price inflation, there is a potential for successful socialist struggle. Otherwise, the likely outcome of such conflict is, quote, a reformist social movement focused on limited economic questions, end quote. However, ultimately, it is successful class struggle waged by capitalists globally, which makes it possible for struggles over public ownership and workers' control of property, specifically the means of production, to be relatively muted and convivial in the imperialist countries. The historical accumulation of transferred surplus value in the advanced industrial countries ensures that retailers there can expect to receive a much higher price for their wares than in the third world. As such, employers can afford to pay core nation workers higher wages, thus contributing to the high value added to their product in the subsequent phase of expanded capitalist reproduction. It is this which enables the maintenance of metropolitan labor's distinctly, quote, middle class, by global economic standards, status. According to the United Nations, in 2006, Britain had the world's third highest average wealth of 126,000 US dollars, or 64,000 pounds, per adult, after the United States and Japan. The income gap between a rich country like Britain and the poorest fifth of countries grew from around 54 to 1 in 1980 to 75 to 1 in 1999, or 28%. Yet this growing gap between British and third world incomes cannot have been the product of more militant class struggle by the British working class, since the number of stoppages due to strikes in the UK economy fell by an average 4.5% a year during the same period, from 2100 in 1979 to 200 in 1999. By contrast, since the second half of the 20th century, U.S. imperialism has frequently had to intervene militarily to stabilize dependent capitalist oligarchies against democratic forces across the Third World. World systems theorist and professor of political science Arno Tausch and historian and critic of U.S. foreign policy William Bloom have each provided comprehensive surveys demonstrating the extent of U.S. military and CIA interventions designed to do away with the actuality or potentiality of socialist advance, especially in its third world storm centers. These include Point. 134 small and big, global and domestic, U.S. interventions in the 111 years from 1890 to 2001. 
with an average of 1.15 interventions per year before the end of World War II, and an average of 1.29 after that. In the period after the end of the Cold War, there are 22 interventions, i.e. an average of two per year. Point. 70 global interventions from 1945. In chronological order, China, 1945 to 51, France, 47, Marshall Islands, 46 to 58, Italy, 47 to the 70s, Greece, 47 to 49, Philippines, 45 to 53, Korea, 45 to 53, Albania, 49 to 53, Eastern Europe, 48 to 56, Germany, 1950s, Iran, 53, Guatemala, 53 to the 90s, Costa Rica, 1950s, 1970-71, Middle East, 56 to 58, Indonesia, 57 to 58, Haiti, 59, Western Europe, 50s to 60s, British Guiana, 53 to 50, 64, Iraq, 58 to 63, Soviet Union, 40s to 60s, Vietnam, 45 to 73, Cambodia, 55 to 73, Laos, 57 to 73, Thailand, 65 to 73, Ecuador, 60 to 63, Congo Zaire, 77 to 78, Algeria, 1960s, Brazil, 61 to 63, Peru, 65, Dominican Republic, 63 to 65, Cuba, 59 to present, Indonesia, 65, Ghana, 66, Uruguay, 69 to 72, Chile, 64 to 73, Greece, 67 to 74, South Africa, 60s to 80s, Bolivia, 64 to 75, Australia, 72 to 75, Iraq, 72 to 75, Portugal, 74 to 76, East Timor, 75 to 99, Angola, 75 to 80s, Jamaica, 76, Honduras, 80s, Nicaragua, 1978 to 90s, Philippines, 70s, Seychelles, 79 to 81, South Yemen, 79 to 84, South Korea, 80, Chad, 81 to 82, Grenada, 79 to 83, Suriname, 82 to 84, Libya, 81 to 89, Fiji, 87, Panama, 89, Afghanistan, 79 to 92, El Salvador, 80 to 92, Haiti, 87 to 94, Bulgaria, 90 to 91, Albania, 91 to 92, Somalia, 93, Iraq, 1990s, Peru, 1990s, Mexico, 1990s, Colombia, 1990s, Yugoslavia, 95 to 99, Afghanistan, 2001 to present, Iraq, 2003 to present, Libya, 2011. Point. Bombings in 29 cases. China, 45 to 6. Korea slash China, 50 to 53. Guatemala, 54. Indonesia, 58. Cuba, 60 to 61. Guatemala, 60. Vietnam, 61 to 73. Congo, 1964. Peru, 65. Laos, 64 to 73. Cambodia, 69 to 70. Guatemala, 67 to 69. Grenada, 83. Lebanon and Syria, 83 to 84. Libya, 86. El Salvador, 80s. Nicaragua, 80s. Iran, 87. Panama, 89. Iraq, 91 to present. Kuwait, 91. Somalia, 93. Sudan, 98. Afghanistan, 98. Yugoslavia, 1999. Afghanistan, 
2001 to present, Iraq 2003 to present, Libya 2011. Point. Assassinations. Attempted or successful of leaders, including heads of state, were tried in 35 cases, and assistance in torture was given in 11 countries. Actions against leaders who once worked with the USA. Pol Pot, Manuel Noriega, Saddam Hussein, Mohammed Aidid, and Osama bin Laden. Point. 23 countries where the U.S. was, quote, perverting elections and interfering with the democratic process. Italy, 48 to 70s. Lebanon, 50s. Indonesia, 55. Vietnam, 55. Guyana, 53 to 64. Japan, 58 to 70s. Nepal, 59. Laos, 60. Brazil, 62. Dominican Republic, 62. Guatemala, 63. Bolivia, 66. Chile, 64 to 70. Portugal, 74 to 75. Australia, 74 to 75. Jamaica, 76. Panama, 84, 89. Nicaragua, 84, 90. Haiti, 87 to 88. Bulgaria, 91 to 92. Russia, 96. Mongolia, 96. Bosnia, 1998. End of points. See also William Bloom, 2004. In order to maintain control of the world economy, its financial markets, and its human and natural primary and energy resources, the U.S. military is currently deployed to more locations than ever before. With 156 countries, hosting 255,065 U.S. troops, and 63 having U.S. bases and troops. The idea that global wage differentials are the product of militant class struggle by the first world working class is, on the evidence of geography and forensics of imperialist intervention, far from convincing. End of section.